Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So the whole of next week looks like it's going to be horrible in terms of the weather. It's meant to be rain every day throughout the week. So it looks like I'm not gonna be able to do any outdoor um, shoots in the near future. So I thought I would do a little bit of a Q and A um, in the meantime, until I can go back out again and hopefully get some more content for you. Um, so yeah, I'll just I'll just start off with the questions I got. A lot of them, or pretty much all of them, were to do with what equipment I use, what editing program I also use, and any tips on getting um, sharp images. So I'll just say from the offset, this is all uh, from my own personal experience in terms of how I edit and what I do with my equipment. Everyone's got their own way of doing things. Um, so if you're, you're more than welcome to use the tips I give, um, but otherwise it's just based on experience and what works for me. So one of the first questions I got was, what editing program do I use? So throughout my college studies, I was consistently using Photoshop for everything to do in my work. Um, but when I had my own laptop, and I wanted to do editing from home, one of the programs I used in replacement for Photoshop was Corel Paint Shop Pro. So I really enjoyed the way it was um, quite easy for me to use. A lot of the programs and the editing tools that come with Paint Shop Pro are a lot similar to Photoshop. And with me being a student at the time, it was evidently a lot cheaper. Um, but then after college, I reverted back to Photoshop purely for um, work purposes. And it wasn't until the last year, I believe, I wanted to update my Photoshop. Um, but then I rediscovered PaintShop Pro again, and they had a totally new system just come out, which is the PaintShop Pro Ultimate 2021. So I did a 30 day free trial, which I believe you can still get if you visit their website. And I really enjoyed the way it was able to edit my images. It's not just one set workspace. It you can actually there's three different workspaces, which if I check my notes, I can go through now. So the three workspaces are photography, essentials, and complete. So the complete workspace it provides all the professional editing and design tools, and it also provides managing tabs to organise your images better. So in terms of where they're stored and um, however you edit them, it provides everything as it would for Photoshop. And then the essentials, it's all the main um, editing tools, retouching tools, um, anyone who is a beginner to uh, intermediate users for editing. Um, it's, it's beneficial for all, basically. Um, again, all the similar tools you want to use, such as blur, sharpen, dodge, burn, cropping, anything like that. It provides in the essentials as well as the complete collection. And then there's the photography workspace. So this is for anyone who has never edited an image before, this is the workspace for you. It's simple laid out, it's clear to read. And what I find quite interesting is that the program can actually do a lot of the editing for you in just one click. Um, also, because my images are so natural, I find I don't do an awful lot of editing. Um, if anything, it would be to change the brightness, take out some highlights, crop it, um, and then if there's anything that's really distracting in an image, then I'll go to my essentials workspace. But otherwise, the photography workspace, it's so handy. Um, I did manage to work out how to do a screen recording on my laptop. Um, so I'm going to play that clip for you next and it basically shows you just the photography workspace which is what I use most often, um, what you can expect from it and uh, the tools that it provides. So I'll play that for you now and then I'll be back in a bit. So I'm just going to quickly show you um, one of the settings for PaintShop Pro that I currently use as my editing software. So this is the uh, photography system. This is ideal for anyone new to editing photography. It gives you really simplistic tools and it enables you to do quick editing without having to go through the process of going to your essentials or your complete editing 
I find that a lot of the items on the essentials and complete sources are just too much for me and a lot of my work is very simplistic in terms of what I want to edit. So this uh, photography system is beneficial for me. So I'll quickly just run through what the general setup looks like. So here I've got an image from my previous trip to Bourne Woods with the Willow Warbler. And um, this has already been edited, but this is just to show you what uh, services this program brings you. So you've got a selection of tools down here, quite a lot of new, um, a lot of the new updates to the system. Um, include a lot of AI software, so we've got upsampling for enlarging images, denoise, which is good for when you're using high ISO, ISO in your images, artificial removal, style transfers, and then you've got a one-step photo fix, so the system just basically does everything for you, it will detect what possibly needs editing, and it will just um, edit it in one step, pretty much as it says. Then you've got your brightness and contrast, white balance, and your adjust to hue, saturation and lightness. And then in the more section, we got fade correction, vibrancy, fill light and clarity, local tone mapping and high pass sharpen. So let's say I wanted to change my brightness and contrast. So as you can see on here, it has registered what I last used and it will stick to those. So it looks like already on the right hand side shows you what the after process looks like and the original is next to on the left. And then this in the middle slides, so you can see more the full image of the original and then going across to the After Effects. So the very simple sliding tools, which you can drag like so, bring down the brightness, bring it back up again. It does also have um, automatic settings, so for brights, that will bring it way up. Um, dulling and then similar high contrast and also a low contrast. So you can actually get quite creative with these. Um, but purely for, obviously, my work's very natural, I don't use any artificial lighting whatsoever, so I just like to edit it with the sliders with ease, and then I can either click apply or cancel if I don't want to do that. Um, one step photo fix, like I said, if I click that, it will detect anything that might need adjusting. So again, just sliding it across, it looks like it's sharpened it more, brought out some more highlights, and the image is a little bit more vibrant as well, but more often than not, I like to do the editing myself with the tools laid out down here. Okay, back again. So the next question that I received um, from viewers was what lens do I use for my photography? So a lot of you would have already seen it in um, my videos that I've already made, but I thought I'd just give um, a better overview of it sitting down rather than being out in the field with it. So for my camera body, I have the Canon 6D. Um, I've, I've had it for quite a few years now, but I just find it really handy in terms of its lightweight and it's, it's just easy to transport around. Um, it does have uh, additional features like Wi-Fi options, but I don't really use that. <laughs> um, again, it's just got all, all the settings you need. Um, it's it's easy to use basically. So this is my one and only camera body. Um, it would be nice at some point in the future to maybe get an additional body in case anything happens to this. But otherwise, I'm really happy with it. Um, the lens fitting is an EF. Uh, again, a lot of EF lenses are available on the market. Anything from Canon uh, to external brands like Tamron and Sigma, and same Sigma. This is, it says, my main lens. It is the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter f5 to 6.3 contemporary lens. Um, I did have a Sigma before when I was starting out in photography. It was a 100 to um, 500, I believe. I can't remember now, it was a while ago. But that one was uh, bought second hand. It was something to just try out at the time. So this one is pretty much as new as it gets for me. It's the newest piece of equipment I have ever owned. And yeah, um, so far I'm absolutely loving it. It does come with a lens hood, again, which is really useful. What you might notice also is that um, it's, it's all black in color, but when I've actually taken it out with me, it features um, camo neoprene 
So this just slides on, fits onto each of the compartments, so it doesn't restrict when you want to zoom in or out. Um, but yeah, otherwise, one of the features that I really like about this is that there is a lock button here. So if I turn that off, it allows me to zoom out. So that's at the full uh, 600 mil length. And then I can lock it in place and then it won't move. So I find this quite useful when I want to fix my images into just uh, one fixed length. Um, and then anything in between, you can stop it down at 300 and again, lock it in place and it won't move. So it's quite good if you want to trial out um, a fixed lens. I am myself looking at getting a fixed lens of about 300 as an addition. Um, but yeah, this is really good just to, um, if you want to lock it in place, so if your camera and lens is sort of hanging down when you've got a strap across, um, it just stops it from, you know, gravity sort of pulling it down and resulting in complications later. Um, all these buttons on the side here, Again, anyone used to using telephoto lenses will be familiar with these sort of buttons. So we've got three focus options here, which we've got AF, MO and MF. So we've also got automatic focus, so lens does everything for you. And then manual focus, so again you've got the focus ring to do, um, just to do your own focusing, which I, I quite enjoy doing. A lot of the older lenses I used when they were second hand and they were starting to sort of not perform at their best. I got very used to doing manual focus so I do often go to manual focus and then if I'm dealing with conditions where there's a lot of foliage in the way um, or I want to zoom in on one specific species if there's a lot of them then I often go to manual override so that still does it automatic focus but you can then override it if there is something specific you want to focus on which I really like and then we've got the uh, focal length range here so that uh, determines the distance you can get with your lens. So you've got the full, which will go anywhere from 2.8 meters to infinity. And then you've got 10 meters to infinity. So anything further than 10 meters or longer, that's quite good for that. And then 2.8 to 10 meters. So again, anything that's a bit closer and you um, want that depth of field to still stay, then that's really good for anything closer or 2.8 meters up to 10 meters away from you. And then we've got the OS system and custom systems. So I personally do not use these, um, but in terms of what they provide, you can obviously, um, you've got two different custom settings here. I don't know specifically, obviously what they're for because I don't use them myself. It's something I still need to learn um, in my notes actually. So for the OS, uh, the mode one is just for general use of the lens, so zooming, automatic focus, and then mode two, mode two is actually down for uh, vertical shake and subjects that are moving across the screen. So if you're, for example, doing panning work, then the second OS system is quite good for that. Again, don't know much about the custom, uh, purely because I like to use the lens as it is. It's just an additional setting that if anyone is interested in getting a lens like this, then this is what the lens provides. So yeah, in addition to uh, the 150 to 600, I also have uh, another Sigma. This is a teleextender, teleconverter, sorry, uh, 1.4 um, for the cat for Canon. So I can fix this to uh, my camera body and to the lens. Um, so this gives me, as opposed to the 600mm length that the uh, Sigma lens gives me, this can then push it to 840 So again, great for long distance subjects um, without having to do an awful lot of copying when it comes to editing. So yeah, really, I, really, I don't use this an awful lot, purely because um, I either haven't had the time to fix it, I'll forget to fix it in between my camera and my lens. Um, but yeah, for anything where I'm wanting to focus on the subject far away, this is really useful. So I would highly recommend this, um, just to give you that bit of extra distance uh, without distorting the image too much. The image quality actually comes out really well with this, despite the distance. So yeah, that's just sort of 
uh, a quick roundup of the equipment that I use. And then I think the final question, if I check my notes, yeah, so tips on uh, settings or getting sharp images um, and what are the camera settings used for having such a long lens. So you will notice that um, I do mostly handheld work when I'm out in the field. I do have a monopod to hand, um, but I find that when you come across a subject and like a surprise, um, it's there's not an awful lot of time for you to get the monopod out, attach it and then set up normally. I would simply, when I'm holding my camera and my lens, I would bring my arms in and they act as a support, sort of like um, a tripod. So I fix it all in place and that gives me a bit more stability. Uh, so that's often what I go for if I don't have my monopod or my tripod to hand. If I'm staying in one place for a considerable amount of time, obviously I would have the tripod then. But yeah, otherwise I'm, I'm quite confident in holding it myself bringing the arms in and uh, yeah just add that bit of stability and then for occasions where there's a bird flying across I can then easily move my body like so and again it just provides that stability. Um, in terms of settings I go for the uh, aperture priority on my camera and this is purely because it is a program that I have worked with for a long amount of time since I've been doing wildlife photography in my spare time. Um, basically the aperture priority it gives you ultimate control over your shutter speed. So when you're given the widest aperture, so for example my lens will go to uh, f5, if I open it up to the widest aperture it still gives a fast shutter speed. So when you're photographing moving subjects Plus you have a long lens that you are hand holding, you haven't got that stability of a monopod or a tripod, you still get that faster shutter speed. And it's simple for me because if I'm on a manual mode where you're doing the shutter speed, you're doing the aperture and you're adjusting the ISO and you're going for all those manual settings, by the time you've got them all set up, your subject might have already gone. So for aperture priority, it just gives me um, the depth of field that I want to achieve and then I don't have to worry so much about the uh, shutter speed because I know the shutter speed is going to be at its quickest especially if I'm shooting a moving subject and then again um, with the ISO you, you can alter the ISO but you can still get that fast shutter speed regardless because you're using aperture priority so I hope that's clear for you um, I often I find it hard to sort of describe or um, interpret uh, the way that I work purely because I'm mostly on my own doing it and I it's weird to sort of give that sort of advice um, to you people but I'm, I'm really grateful that uh, you wanted to know um, how I shoot my work and the equipment I use so yeah hopefully that um, this has given you a sort of insight into how I do my work my wildlife work and yeah, if you still have any other questions that I haven't really touched on, I can certainly do my best to answer them um, as clearly as I can. Um, but yeah, this is, it's been nice to sort of sit down for a bit, talk a bit about how I, I shoot my work, the equipment I use, and hopefully it will give you um, a sort of an overview if you are interested in wanting to get new equipment for wildlife photography or landscape photography. Um, then yeah, I hope this um, provides a little bit more information for you. Um, but yeah, otherwise, thank you very much for watching this video. Like I said, the weather is meant to be absolutely horrible next week, so I most likely won't be able to get out and shoot anything outdoors. But hopefully the weather will get better um, before I then head off to the Isle of Mull at the beginning of August. Um, so that's going to be exciting. Um, in terms of wanting to do any vlogs on the island, it probably won't be in the sort of diary style where I am out there and I'm talking to you guys. It might be that I shoot some b-roll and I'll try and record some wildlife through um, my own lens and, and just do like a narration over it because it's I can't just how it's going to pan out if I'm wanting to talk but then there's something happening and I don't really want to talk. 
So we'll see how that goes, but I'm very much looking forward to it. Um, there are a couple of locations I'd like to visit before I go, and hopefully I will be able to record some of that for you. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all hopefully in the not too distant future. Bye.